to bring up Biden again. <laughs> I would like to just poke a little fun at our commander in chief before I get started. You know, take him down a peg. Why not? Ah. You know, Joe Biden, really, what a sharp guy. <laughs> Did you want to see his, his most recent speech? I mean, he was so fired up talking about current events. He was all talking about, he was saying, we got to stop Brezhnev, the Soviets, they're taking away. <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 no. I meant Ukraine. No, Afghanistan. Uh, uh, all right, that's my time. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, <laughs> this is the real part. Um, I'm looking around, seeing so many different faces, both familiar and new, and I can't help but just feel happy that to have so many different people, so many different backgrounds and stories, but all of us united, and that something about what is being said here, the message being promoted here by the Center for Political Innovation speaks to all of us in a way that many other political groups today don't. So on that note, I'd actually just like to tell the story of my political and personal development and how I became a member of the Center for Political Innovation. Now, I've been at least vaguely political since I was 12 years old. It was 2015, and I heard about the Bernie Sanders campaign, particularly his advocacy of Medicare for All, universal health care. So at this point, I'd been in remission for leukemia for four years, and I was grappling with some questions, particularly the issue of healthcare. You know, hearing about people struggling with their medical bills, you know, going bankrupt from them, being destitute for illnesses that are out of their control. But luckily, I had come from a family where we were able to stay afloat amidst the medical bills. But it just struck me as, as just really, really not right that so many families, most American families would have gone bankrupt, paying medical bills for an illness that was out of their control. So I decided to do something. Signed up as a volunteer for the Bernie Sanders campaign. And families in West Virginia, New Jersey, all over the country, got some interesting phone calls <laughs> from a, a timid 12 year old trying to explain to them why a vote for Bernie Sanders was a vote for their future. Now fast forward five years. I had known about Caleb Moffin since the early months of 2020, before the pandemic. But honestly, I hadn't thought very positively of him. All these smears on the internet had gotten to me. <laughs> I heard he was a Nazbol, a secret right winger, yada yada. We've all heard that already. I'm not gonna go through all of it. <laughs> but instead of just attacking Caleb and smearing him on the internet, like so many other progressive, so-called progressives and socialists I've been hearing, listening to, I decided to take a cue from Mao. No investigation, no, no right, right to speak. speak. Yeah. So I figured, why not engage with the man himself, hear it from the horse's mouth. I reached out to him and asked him his views. I talked with him, and I even challenged him a little bit to try and figure out where he really stood on these issues. And in this process, I learned some things about him. I learned about his history of progressive activism. And he even worked personally with Leslie Feinberg, the founder of the transgender movement. And I came to my own conclusion that the slander being thrown against Caleb was, well, just that slander. And furthermore, something about the way Caleb expressed these ideas really resonated with me. I heard about socialism and communism, capitalism, imperialism, all these ideas, I heard about them before, but never explained as concisely and definitively as I heard from Caleb. Woo! disagreements or slip-ups, mm -hmm. and thought-stopping, that's another big one. Mm -hmm. They say, this thing sounds kind of like this other thing, <laughs> and this other thing 
is something a bad people say. So don't even, <laughs> don't even think about it. Turn your brain off. Bad. But from Caleb, I heard the exact opposite. I heard optimism. I heard hope. I heard the idea that the people can, the people can win and that the people will win. Yeah. <laughs>
and monopoly and finance capital that Lenin talked about. And our American government is functioning to facilitate and maintain this imperialism. They're trying. They really are trying to get us into a third world war that will kill millions, mm. all so they can stay on top. Mm. I, for one, am sick and tired of it. Mm. When I see China moving to reunify with their brothers and sisters in Taiwan, and our leaders tell us we need to go fight, tell them, I will fight, but not against China. Mm. That's, right. That's right. And when I see Russia having no other choice but to move in and protect the peoples of eastern Ukraine, who've been living under a fascistic regime of terror since 2014, and our leaders tell us we need to go fight. Tell them, I, I will, will fight. fight! But not against Russia. Woo! That's right! That's right! That's right! That's right! That's right! in this country and all over the world rise up and they say they're sick and tired of this rotten system that's destroying their lives. And our leaders tell us we need to go fight to keep them afloat. Go ahead and tell them at the top of your lungs, I will fight. I will fight against their wars. I will fight against their poverty, their destitution, their depravity. I will fight. And that's what really needs to make, be made clear to them. That if they keep pushing and pushing the people mm. to accept worse and worse conditions, mm -hmm. then not just me, not just us, but millions of people right here and across the globe will join hands together and say, I, I will, will fight! fight.
As a correspondent for RT, Caleb has many heated exchanges with U.S. State Department spokespeople. And in March of 2016, Donald Trump accidentally called Caleb his favorite reporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When we're calling on Caleb to ask a question, Trump says, who's my favorite reporter? <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Maupin is a visionary, bringing forward a realistic project to bring 21st century socialism to America. He has had the boldness to create the Center for Political Innovation and to bring so many young people just like me into a life of revolutionary organizing. With deep revolutionary love for you all, and an optimistic outlook towards tomorrow, I present to you the man who brought us all together here tonight, founder and director, Caleb Ma.